Hey everybody, it is Dr. Dickinson. I want to take some time to talk to you about the big five pedagogies that we'll be reading about in our course. These are from our textbook, Teaching Outside the Box, and we'll be learning about practices that you can build in your math classroom, which include daily routines, open-ended tasks, project-based learning, problem-based learning, and math centers. And in the book, you're going to see hyperlinks to tools, examples to bring into your classroom, digital resources, and more. So when you get to this screen, you're going to see they are all hyperlinks. So if you get a link to this presentation, definitely check out these videos that I'm sharing. They're all real examples from the classroom of what each of these practices look like. And these practices were selected because they align with the Common Core's approach to having a balanced math instruction. And that what that means is that students are learning about math concepts conceptually, right? They're learning that a thousand blocks represents a thousand pennies. And they're learning about procedural knowledge, like long division. And they need to have both the understanding of what these concepts are, what they mean, and then have those skills to be able to be efficient and problem solve. So it's really important, um, and we'll, we talk about starting with, you know, concrete representations and then having students do visual drawings, and then moving to ab abstract symbolic form. We talk about this balanced approach, and when we start looking at these strategies, we can think about how it builds students' conceptual learning. How does working with a 10 frame help students develop conceptual understanding of making a 10. And why is that more effective than just teaching students, oh, well, you just, you know, add one or take one away. Um, that concrete representation that allows students to move and manipulate is so much powerful. It's so much meaningful to you, our young learners. And for our secondary students, having that conceptual understanding of you know, not just talking about ratios, but actually making a lemonade and seeing what mix of lemonade tastes sweeter based on um, our mixture, giving that conceptual understanding. So it can also be experiential. And then we have our eight standards for mathematical practice, which are the habits of mind we want to instill in our students so that they can be confident and be productive problem solvers. And we want them to know that it's okay to struggle and there are ways that we can problem solve and for some kids we want to use our tools and for other kids we can model with math and as teachers we want to be kind of zoning in on what our students are doing so if they're working with 100 charts we can help them see patterns and look for regularity in mathematics and that's going to help them develop um, automaticity which is really critical so one of the daily routines that we talked about was number talks. And I love number talks because they're visual and they allow students to kind of express what they know and have different solutions and share their thinking. It's, it's such a wonderful thing to be part of as a teacher. And so I hope you get to do these kinds of daily routines in your teaching practice when you're working with, with our kiddos. And certainly you can do number talks all the way up to high school. It's gonna help build confidence in young mathematicians going to help them think about thinking, right? That, those metacognitive skills. And that is so essential because that's what makes students persist and to not give up. All right, here's an example of a digital number talk that I actually created on a Google slide deck. So you can check this out. And there is a video if you want to see what this looks like in action. So we're going to do a number talk online today. All right. Next, we'll be talking about project and problem-based learning. There are certainly overlaps between both of these pedagogical practices. They're very student-centered, and there's a lot of student voice. We want to hear a lot of student talk happening. And for the teacher, it's really just about being a great facilitator and asking good questions. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't do explicit direct instruction. We do that, but it's based on what we're observing from our students. And our projects and problems are going to allow our students to use many different strategies to problem solve and to make choices. So it really helps support student agency. So here's an example of a problem-based learning activity that I actually created for my daughter who is in second grade and it's called Adopt-a-Pet. 
because she loves the Roblox game Adopt Me. So check this out. There's a lot of fun activities. Students are going to work on the second grade Common Core math standards about comparing two and three digit numbers, and they're going to fluently add and subtract within 100. So as you can see in this slide, um, there are images of base 10 blocks. You have your hundreds and your tens and your ones, and students are going to build the number. That's going to help with their conceptual understanding. And as you see down the bottom of the screen, they're writing the number 672 in expanded form. Now we'll help them with their procedural fluency when they're adding uh, three-digit numbers with another three-digit number. And so here's another video. Catherine's going to explain. She is in second grade just how fun and engaging this activity is. Another example, um, students are going to review. It's always important when you're building projects to have students to review what they know. It helps them set a foundation and then you can help and you can give them the answers so they can self-regulate. Here's one example of a project-based learning activity for secondary students. Students who are working on constant and proportionality and they create created ratio tables, and they got to design their own store and come up with sales and write algebraic equa equations. Um, so if you want to learn more about this particular project-based learning activity, the students are creating a project, product of learning, based on their interest that builds in math skills, check out that out with the blue hyperlink at the top. This was a really fun activity, and students came up with some wild, crazy websites of all different things that I never knew they had interest in. But we got to really reinforce those uh, key math skills for seventh grade. All right, you guys. Now, when we talk about open-ended tasks, these are tasks that allow students to create, synthesize big ideas. There are multiple solutions. So you can even use these with digital tools. This is an example of a digital geo board, which I love. And the students had to show an area of a shape with more than one shape. Um, and they had to find the area and explain their thinking. Of course, you can also use uh, classroom examples. The students are measuring the perimeter. They've got their tools. They're um, working collaboratively. Another example of a problem-based learning activity. And we can also add these to digital slide decks. The students are exploring the nets of geometric solids, and then they're recording their responses. NCTM has some additional tools that help students learn about surface area, volume, and create. Um, it's very discovery-based and helps students build conceptual understanding. Another example of an open-ended task here, um, and this is for sixth grade, beginning pre-algebra. Students were given a budget and they had to create an, a hanger to illustrate how to stay balanced. And this is with a wonderful tool. Um, it's called Solve Me Mobiles. And so typically when we talk about algebraic expressions, it's all about keeping balance and what you do on one side of the equation, you do on the other. Well, that's just a lot of jargon. But when they get to see it in real life with the mobile, how you have to stay balanced and how you create quality on both sides, it helps build an understanding for algebra. All right, so what does a typically, typical day look like with all of these practices? Well, you begin with your daily routine. You have your lesson, which can be project-based, problem-based, or open-ended tasks. And then you're just gonna have time to share out and celebrate all that you've achieved in your math instruction. Thank you so much.